I'm Dr. Brad Bengtson, and you're watching the Plastic Surgery Channel. Hello, I'm Lindsay Hall, and welcome to the Plastic Surgery Channel. I'm here with Dr. Scott Spear to discuss some innovative technologies taking place in plastic surgery today. Dr. Spear has a practice in Washington, D.C. Dr. Spear, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Lindsay. We're glad to have you. Can you tell us a little bit about how you got started in this industry? My father said I had to go make a living, mm -hmm. and at that moment in time, medicine looked like the best place to go, and of all the things in medicine, plastic surgery is the best. What drew you there? Surgery, doing surgery rather than watching things, actually having the ability to intervene, and then plastic surgery because it's so creative and allows you to see what you've done. Now, what is oncoplastic breast reconstruction, and where do you see the field evolving? Also, I want to know if Europe varies from what you see here in the United States. Yeah. Well, oncoplastic breast surgery uh, came out of Germany primarily back in the late 80s and early 90s where gynecologists in Germany did both the cancer surgery and the reconstruction. Mm -hmm. And so they got interested in seeing if they could do the cancer surgery in such a way to, mi to minimize the problems, okay. you know, the deformities. Mm -hmm. And so they tried to bring that over to the United States. And actually, it's a very interesting concept, but it really has never caught on in the United States. And I think uh, what I'm seeing in the United States instead is that we probably need to have better partnering between plastic surgeons and breast cancer surgeons, so that the patients are offered all the tools of oncoplastic surgery, but by a team rather than just one surgeon. So in Germany, it kind of worked because of what the gynecologists do and how they're trained. Mm -hmm. But I think the United States is going to translate into a team approach. That would be great. Do you, do you think that that would be a hard infrastructure to build? It depends where you're trying to build it. Uh, if you're trying to build it in a university hospital or a big metropolitan hospital where there's teamwork kind of by nature, not too hard, but in smaller communities, it may be tougher to get surgeons who are committed to both sides of that, the breast cancer surgery and the reconstructive stuff. Okay. And many plastic surgeons in the U.S. feel that oncoplastic concept, or the, the concept in general, is a threat to the future of plastic reconstruction um, as far as plastic surgery on the whole is concerned. Is that a real, is that a valid fear? I think <clears throat> there's a fear on the parts of some plastic surgeons that oncoplastic surgery is a threat and it would translate that maybe the breast cancer surgeons would want to do all of the reconstructive surgery. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that threat is very large, but I think the key thing is for plastic surgeons to demonstrate that they're really committed to the breast cancer patient and that they want to work with the breast cancer surgeons. And by and large, I don't think there are very many breast cancer surgeons who are really going to take up the challenge of trying to do the whole thing because mm -hmm. the field's too big. If you think about uh, all the options available for cancer patients, there aren't even very many plastic surgeons who can do the whole thing. So the idea that a general surgeon could do the cancer treatment and do all the reconstructive options is probably not going to happen. Okay, and if, if an oncologic surgeon called himself a breast reconstructive surgeon, why would he not call himself a cosmetic breast surgeon as well? Well, there's, there's no limit to bad behavior. <laughs> there are probably people who are not even surgeons calling themselves cosmetic surgeons. Oh. But uh, <laughs> I, I think in reality, at least in terms of uh, reputable general surgeons, uh, particularly ones interested in breast cancer, they're not going to be doing that. I think there, there probably are going to be people who are going to stretch the, the boundaries and do things which are not in their best interest or in the patient's best interest. But... I think that's going to be the exception. Do you think that there would be an opportunity to set down some, some guidelines and boundaries as to where one may cross over and where one may not? Uh, historically, there's never been any successful boundaries set. Uh, the nature of medicine is that these things evolve. Mm -hmm. So we have, for example, uh, radiologists doing breast biopsies, mm -hmm. and we have uh, 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 cardiologists doing invasive cardiac procedures rather than heart surgeons. So it's very hard to tell one specialty you can't do something else. So the best way to do that is by showing that you are the people best trained and best able to deliver something and get the message out to the public. Those, the, those rules are very hard to create and they invite all kinds of arbitrary and even bad rules. So I, I doubt we're ever going to see 
firm rules created. Do you feel like that kind of migration is harmful to the patients and the public in general? Uh, I think people, when they get too far off their own reservation, risk damaging and hurting patients. Uh, but on the other hand, you don't want to totally squash you know, evolution and you know, people developing new techniques. For example, you know, open heart surgery was the thing 10 years ago, mm -hmm. and today angioplasty has replaced it in large part. And you could argue that by and large that's probably been to the benefit of the patients. So even though cardiologists and, and radiologists have help, kind of moved into that space, that's probably been overall a public health benefit. Perfect. So plastic surgeons have to make sure that they're taking care of the patients and bringing new techniques to the table. And as long as they're doing that, then they will be the ones doing the reconstructions. Okay, perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Don't forget, you can Twitter us your questions to be answered by future guests. And we here at the Plastic Surgery Channel thank you, the viewer, for watching.